everyone that ratted on it um, and told us how cold and miserable it is, they can all go get stuffed. Well munted, a bit how you're going, it's definitely been better day. It's about a thousand bucks. But there was actually some killer whales out the back. Did I not say that I was going to get the best catch of the day? He reckons he's had a few bites, but he's full of shit. I'm hooking up to a bloody tuna, mate. Just <laughs> be right on the spot, I bet. I'm Keelan. And this is Sarah. We have been fishing, surfing, full driving our way around Australia for the past year now. Meet Percy and Keith Urban, our trusty steeds. Subscribe to join our adventure. What's up YouTube, it's everyone here. We're back in Australia. Feels good. It's not much warmer here in Melbourne, but we're back. How do you feel, Sarah? I'm very happy to be back. New Zealand was absolutely amazing. I've never experienced anything like it. There's nothing like coming home to your own bed and to your own van. And we have settled back into life in Little Keith very well. <laughs> Actually, I will talk a bit about that because it hasn't been as smooth as Sarah reckons. So going from a massive luxury 20 foot van to a 16 foot hybrid luxury van doesn't sound like much of a jump, but I can assure you it was. It was pretty hard yakka to start with, but yeah, we're starting to make our way back into it. We had to do a big spring clean because our freezer full of fish fillets um, and our inside fridge full of food as well went off during, well, the fridge has turned off somehow. It must have got unplugged um, somehow from where we stored it. So anyway, we threw out a heap of fillets, which sucks about $250 worth, but that is what it is. We're at our mates, Tribs Travels House. We've been calling them Tribes Travels. Apparently we've been saying it wrong this whole time. Anyway, Tribs Travels, um, we're up in Gippsland still. And yeah, we're doing some, well, Gippsland or Gippsland? Gippsland, anyway, <laughs> doesn't matter. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, we've been getting looked after so well here. Um, it's amazing. Lisa and Jason have been so kind to have us, and Brad, so yeah, they've been so kind to have us here. And today, we're gonna be doing some maintenance on the car. So next uh, big adventure we're doing, we're making our way up to the Cape of Australia, which everyone knows is very, very tough on your gear. So we need to get Percy the Prado in top, top nick shape. Um, Ridgy Didge, ready for the bloody big cape trip so pretty well I've got back in the car I've realized that the front left tire is really chopped out what's happened is um, we've had the car wheel aligned um, when there's no weight on the back and then as soon as you put weight on the back it lifts the front up and then your tires drop in a little bit and they tow in especially when you're going around roundabouts all the weight is actually on the inside of the tire and it's chopped it out I'll show you our steering rack has been a bit flogged out so you can see here every second tread block um, is absolutely munted so Munted's actually a really good word. I haven't used the word munted since I was in buddy year 10, but she's well munted. Um, it's a bit how you're going. It's definitely seen better days. So we're going to pull the steering rack out. It's about a thousand bucks for a new steering rack and chuck a new one in. That's with tie rod ends. Um, lucky for us, Jason and Lisa um, have pretty much a mechanic shop at their house, which is so lucky because um, we, we've got a hoist here. We'll chuck it up on the hoist. Um, we'll grease everything up, get it ready for the cape. So um, we'll show you a bit of that now. Alright, so progress report. I've got the Prado up on the rack. Jason's probably pretty much done everything at this point. We um, had a bit of hard time getting that bash plate off because one of the bolts had seized up, which is pretty standard for a car at done 270,000 Ks on the beach. So. so you're probably wondering what this stuff I'm spraying on the chassis is. So not long ago, Derek from Just Vanning It put up a video about, I'm gonna say it wrong, but lanolin, which is a spray. Apparently it's sheep extract. Um, it smells just like a bloody shearing shed. Anyway, you spray a bit of this on your chassis and apparently it protects it. Um, 
seen Derek's 79 chassis. It's come off an absolute treat. So Jason actually put him onto that. So I'm going to have a crack as well. Um, so I've sprayed that all over the, the car on the underbody. And you can already see it's doing something. So anyway, it's just the little things. I know it's 260,000 Ks old, this car. But I mean, if you're going to own a car, you might as well look after it. Um, and we punish our gear pretty hard. So if it gets a birthday every now and again like this, it's probably good going. But it's uh, just about time to put this new rack in. Um, I should have shown you the play in the wheels to show you guys what to look out for as well with your steering rack. But um, Jason's just ripping off the tie rod ends now and then we'll bang this rack in. Um, we got all this pretty much from Auto Pro, which is similar to your Repco and stuff. We just ordered it in um, and the rack was supposedly meant to come with new tie rod ends, but it didn't. So we're still trying to sort that out. But um, Jason assures me this is a quick job, so hopefully it's super quick. But as you guys know, that mechanical jobs can turn very ugly pretty quick. So eight hours later. The, the old steering rack out. We've had to remove the sway bar now, which is awesome. Proven to be pretty difficult. And because it's such an old car, everything is seized. But we are making progress. Um, we're just taking this sway bar out on the other side. Um, and you should have seen how much gunk and uh, mud and shit was in the uh, steering column. It was just next level. So we've given it a bit of a spruce up. And uh, she's going to be driving good as new, hopefully. But... I thought I'd show you guys this old tyre that was on the front left that's now chopped out. So the rest of the BFGs are in good shape apart from this one. Um, every second tread block is actually flogged. But I just want to show you guys how critical it is that you get your wheel alignment done because as soon as you start chopping out a muddy, especially, one side of the tread block sticks up so much higher and when you actually roll it, you'll see why the car was actually driving like a dog. So we got the tyre here. So this side here is the flog side, this side's the good side. And if I kick it straight, it should turn, almost hit the side of the shed. Look at that. Not even running straight at all. That's why it was driving like a dog. All right guys, so while I've got you on tires, one thing that has saved me on the hard tracks, and this is definitely a massive plug, but I check TPMS make the best tire pressure monitoring systems on the market. They offer different modes, so on-road and off-road mode. So you've got two separate parameters. That means you're protected when you're on the beach and you drop your tires really low. This thing's still gonna protect you. It has caravan disconnect mode, uh, no cables to it too. It's got a solar panel on the roof. The little beads actually are tiny. They're actually no bigger than the beads that you'd have um, the tire caps on your stems anyway and for a limited time only with every tire pressure monitor sold using the discount code SKT10 so that's our code uh, Sam from iCheck he's a um, small Australian business that's the alarm because I've taken the bead off that's the alarm it makes when it thinks you've got a flat so super annoying um, I'll just mute that but for a limited time only two weeks for every tire pressure monitor sold um, Sam is going to throw in a digital tyre pressure gauge as well. This thing is valued at $50, so you won't only get 10% off with SKT10 on a tyre pressure monitor, but he'll also throw in a $50 gauge as well. But that's only while stocks last. He told me to say that because he doesn't have many of these things, and you'll still get your 10% off with every tyre pressure monitor sold. So that's a cracker little deal, guys. Um, yeah, we'll get back to the video now. The so job's done. New steering rack's in. We've um, put back in all the bash plates, which is fun. Uh, we got some new tie rod ends coming as well and it's off to get wheel line so you've definitely got to get a wheel alignment after you bloody do this sort of work so that's what these see these tie rod ends here we need to replace them straight down get the line but like i said it's very important to get your tires um, aligned properly or they will chop out and the car will drive like a dog and i've just been putting this job off um so it's good to we did a rotation on the tires as well um so one thing I want to ask you guys is what checks and maintenance do you guys do before a massive trip, especially towing a caravan? So mission accomplished, we finally got that steering rack in, but we found out we did bugger something else up, a clock spring. I'm sure a lot of you wouldn't even know what I'm talking about. Apparently it's a little turntable thing inside 
your steering wheel that controls all your uh, cruise control and everything. When you're doing a steering rack, if you over rotate your wheel, you'll snap the bloody clock spring. So we've had to order another one of those, but me and Jason have learnt now. We know how to change Prados. Um, it was a bit of a learning curve for both of us. So we got it in finally. We just need to replace the clock spring. But today we are exploring Gippsland, not Gippsland, Gippsland, <laughs> and we're at Walkable South. So this place is renowned for its kilns. This is Waratah Bay. And uh, these actually provided fired limestone for the building industry in Melbourne. So pretty cool to see. I'll whack the drone up now and I'll show you the old kilns. They're right on the water. And this place is spectacular. Obviously, Tribs Travels, go follow them on Instagram. They're locals here, so they've caught many King George whiting and various other species of fish out here. So, yeah, they know what's in this water. Um, still, we don't have fishing rods today, but it is a killer spot. You've definitely got to come to Gippsland. It's underrated, um, and it's definitely worth your time. Check it out. directly across the road from Wilson's Promontory. So you guys would have seen that in one of our last few episodes. We're at Cape Lip Trap Lighthouse and there was so many people here. Everyone was surrounded around. We just thought it was quite popular, but there was actually some killer whales out the back feeding, which was really cool to see. Lisa tried to get them on the long lens, so fingers crossed we got something. It might just be a splash, but we'll go home and have a look at the footage. Can she get in it? Oh, look at that. All right, so we have showed you the coast at Gippsland, not Gippsland, I keep getting told, but today is sick. We're actually out in the boat today. Jason and Lisa have been nice enough to take us out in their surtees. Beautiful boat. Um, it's a stunning day too. You wouldn't know it's winter in Melbourne. Everyone keeps cracking on about how cold it is, but today is 16 degrees, plenty balmy. Sarah's probably going to outfish us all today as well. I'm going to outfish everyone, even Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the skipper's put us on the spot. Mrs. Lisa might catch a few fish as well, hopefully. So we'll see how we go. Bring you guys along for the bloody ride and uh, ho hopefully we catch something. Anything. 
Gillen reckons he's had a few bites so he's full of shit. We're gonna go see some seals now. They're playing around with all the fishing boats, so let's go have a look. So like Sarah said, not much fish, but check out these scenes. It's absolutely unbelievable here. I bet you haven't seen nothing like that before. So we are out the back of Phillip Isle at the moment. We're making our way towards Woolamai, and that's where we were the other day. That's that surfing reserve, but the cliffs out the front here are just insane. It looks like we're in the freaking, looks like we're in the Bahamas, I reckon. It's like Mediterranean. I reckon there might be more fish in the Bahamas though. I don't know, what do you reckon Jason? More fish in the Bahamas? Skipper's not happy. Anyway, check it out. So part of the reason why they're not on the chew today is because the water's so freaking cold. It's uh, 11 degrees at the moment. So I'd hate to think what New Zealand was the other day. But uh, yeah, it's, it needs to be around 13 or 14, Jason reckons for them to be on the chew. So they're not quite hungry yet. So it's slim pickings today, but we might try for a fish out the out wide here um, just before the wind comes in so we'll give it a crack see how we go what are you doing kills i'm hooking up to a bloody tuna mate <laughs> <laughs> didn't realize you were filming and <laughs> yeah, now we're gonna try a trawl out to this spot this gummy shark spot so we might as well have a bit of a trawl out there see if we can't come up with the tuna they've been catching a few lately so what have we got the red dog so they have been catching a few big tuna out the back here behind phillip island so I've got a skirt on this one, and then uh, we're running a lure on the other one, so uh, yeah, hopefully we might be able to snag some. It'd be good good to show you guys a big tuna. I saw some photos of them, and they're that massive, massive blue, blue fin, so yeah. yeah, huge. Hopefully we get one. worry about sharks here do you? If this is in X mouth you would have been sharked about four times <laughs> Oh I got colour. Big flatty I think. Oh I oh, know it's not. Uh, yeah it's flatty. It's a flatty. Tiger yeah. flatty. Not very big but that's my first tiger flatty. Check it out. Oh that's cute. Yeah, that's it's got good colours on the bugger. Him. Oh it's big. I thought it was bigger than that. That's, that's actually tight. Bloody, I'd say, mate. 
colour yet. Oh, it's got nothing. Let go. Oh, you're getting a bottle. Just be right on the spot of it. But... This one's got a bit more go here. It might be a different species. Oh, Sarah's got Sarah's one. Sarah's got one. Yeah, I told you that. You bloody ignored me. Oh, don't spike me with it. <laughs> spike me on the ass. <laughs> Bring it in. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, good flatty. Yeah, that's a good one, Sarah. Good flatty. Look at that. Woo! <laughs> Double hookups. <laughs> Skipper's on. Skips on, mate. Calling a flatty. This might be a tag and release mission, though. Eh? <laughs> you reckon it's a flatty? I think so. Here we go. Hello. Oh, oh, flatty. flatty. That's decent. Look at that. Woo! We've come in from the flatty hunt and we've I think we've copped about six flatties eh? I think that's six in there, not too sure. A couple of them are pretty good size, but it's pretty sad when you have to get the snags out. But how sick is this boat? The Surte is, is absolutely providing. Got a cooker on that side. How the fuck does this pop up? Oh like that. Sink on that side, fridge inside. Have you ever seen a boat? Are you splash? doing a boat walk around? Pretty much. <laughs> You Have you ever? Hot water, mate. What's that? Oh, the Julka. Hot water. Yeah, we'll yeah. get that out. We'll show everyone the hot water. Have a share on the boat. Quick shaz. Quick Sharon on the boat. <laughs> oh, what a day. Look at it glassed off. Sarah's still learning how to cast. <laughs> That's good. Perfect, but doesn't get much better than that. Just absolute glass, no wind. Victoria. This is apparently Victorian winter, which. You go 50 k's inland and you're in the snow. It's hard to believe that we're, yeah, in Victoria. Everyone that ratted on it um, and told us how cold and miserable it is, they can all go get stuffed because we've just proved them wrong. And Gippsland, everyone's got to put Gippsland on their list too. I haven't seen anyone showcase it, so yeah, definitely come here. There's plenty to do. We've had scenic flights buzzing us all day. It would look amazing from the sky. So anyway, hopefully we get something. But if we don't, I know the snags will taste bloody good. So yeah, cool. Has anyone ever seen this thing before? Look at this crab. Did Don't... I not say that I was going to get the best catch of the day? That is not the best. Look at this That little... is scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Jason like... just made a good point. Maybe right. we are. This could be the deadliest catch we're on right now. All right. Touch it. Get it off. You... No, I'm not touching that. I've never seen a crab like that before. But... All right, so we finished the day. I think we got six flatties, but... Jason has caught many of these fish and you can tell with his filleting skills. I want to show you guys how easy it is to fillet these flatties. I'm not doing it. I'd make it look freaking hard, but it's uh, pretty easy, eh? All right, so this fish is dead. It's been out for a few hours now. Um, make sure your fish are dead before you fillet them. It's important that you um, give it the dignity it deserves. You catch these fish, so look after them. Uh, this is how bloody easy it is. So we come in behind a petrol there. And then just follow it down the backbone. It's like fillet and a shark. And leave just a tiny bit on the end. Flip it. And get your knife in under it. And use the fish as a handle. Look at that. Easy as that. Skinless. Amazing. And you can just take the rib cage out if you want to. Hey Sarah, because this could be you filleting our fish. Not a chance. Under here. Go a bit closer, Kieran. Oh, not the bloody... No one had an ink sack. <laughs> There's a squid hybrid. Look at that. That is just... Doesn't get much easier. Done that. that once or twice. <laughs> I reckon hundreds. Far I'd say. Out. I made it look like real hard compared to that. We've got some old mate on the tractor just doing bog laps. So that wraps up our little time in uh, Gippsland. It's been such a treat having G. Gisa. 
Jason and Lisa around. Um, you guys are absolute legends and uh, some of the nicest people we've ever met. So thank you so much. If you did enjoy today's episode of a bit of a half maintenance, half travel episode, consider subscribing down below um, and feel free to drop us a like and a comment. One thing I want to ask you guys is what checks and maintenance do you guys do before a massive trip? especially towing a caravan. So we're going to Cape York. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And uh, yeah, drop that in the comments below. We reply to every single comment. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to start heading up to Southeast Queensland. We're going to shotgun straight up there because we don't have much time. Um, we've got plans up there and we'll reveal all in a, a new episode next week. So we'll see you guys then. Thanks heaps for watching. Um, cheers, legends. Cool.